Hi, this is John with SentientLight.com. This video is all about the meters found on the left bottom corner of the sentient element. Here I'm just showing really quickly how to find the audio function generator app. I did a video already, a tutorial on how to download and use the app. I recommend watching that first. The main reason why there's meters now included with the sentient element is that they act as EMF detectors. These meters add a lot to the device. There won't be any need to do tinfoil tests, and you're going to know the frequency and power the coil is giving out. So with the function generator app, I'll show you several examples of what the meters will do and what they won't do. The first thing I'd like to point out is that the meters will not be on all the time. You generally want to be running the machine at half power. And when it's on half power, the meters don't light up. Again, the purpose of these meters is not to give you a reading for every single second that you're using the unit, but they are EMF detectors. So when you run a frequency, you want to scroll that power all the way up to 100% or 95%, and then it's going to light up. This lets you know for sure that the power and frequencies are going out to the coil. There are certain times that you'll want high power, and the meters will be on all the time, and that's okay. I just pushed play to run a sweep and increase the volume from 50 to 90, just so the meter, the frequency meter, will light up. It is important to note that as the frequencies get higher, the voltage meter will increase and the amp meter will decrease. When you start the sentient element, the voltmeter will read 130 volts, give or take one number. Then let's say you play a lower frequency, and that's going to use more power. It's going to take out of the volts that you have, the 130, and maybe go down to 125 and increase your amps to 4 or 5. And that is your power. That's how much power you're using. So the rule of thumb is the higher the frequency, the less power. The lower the frequency, the more power the sentient element will use. Again, please follow instructions and our recommendations. We will include stickers and reminders that will help you remember to stay above 122 volts and stay below 8 amps. It will be normal when you play multiple frequencies that your frequency meter will jump around. Right now I'm playing two different sweeps and 50 hertz. And you can see how the frequency meter is just jumping around different numbers. Just like our little reminder says below the frequency meter, this meter does not read above 999, but it will become a field detector. That just means it detects frequencies going out to the coil. Now I'm going to hook up the second coil. When the coil plug is locked into place, make sure to turn the coil switch on. Now that we have two coils, the meters are going to act a little different. The two coils will receive a little more than half power compared to just using one coil. So we're not going to use as much volts and we're not going to use as much amps. So the voltmeter won't go down as much and the amps won't go as high as much as it would with one coil. Here's an example of a two coil system and a one coil system with 50 hertz. You can see the differences between the voltmeters and the amp meters. Here's an example of me testing my audio device before hooking it up to the sentient element. So let's say you didn't get a frequency reading when you tested out the frequency meter. The first thing that you would do is check your audio device to make sure that it is playing those frequencies. This is just one way to troubleshoot in case the frequency meter stops working. So I plugged my iPad back in to the sentient element with the audio cable and then turned on the machine. I'll push play for a frequency and because it was at 50%, we didn't see anything in the frequency meter until we raised the volume up to 95%.